Okay. Let us talk about self-care, sanity, and going AFK. Um, I am not the greatest example sometimes of self-care, but one of the things that you're going to discover in technology is that it's very easy to not notice that you've spent about 10 straight days, 14 hours a day behind a keyboard. This is really not healthy. Here are some of the, we're going to talk about the medical problems that arise from that, how to fix a lot of them, and then just some kind of coping mechanisms. A lot of this is going to be relevant to the rest of your schoolwork and your career, uh, but there are some very specific things involving technology that I want you to be aware about that will, that will cause long-term problems and issues that you can stave off now. We already talked about all the social stuff. Let's talk about the actual physical stuff. Um, so when it comes to, to taking care of yourself when you are a technologist, one of the biggest things that you need to learn is the, the ergonomics of a workstation to make sure that your back is okay. Have you guys ever seen me um, crumple down like this a little bit in my seat and then I remember and I sit back straight up again like this? Yeah, I, I have lots of nodding heads because I do that a lot. Um, I see a lot of you do this over the keyboard. You know, you kind of like sit there and, and don't ever do, don't do that. Um, I actually have physical long-term stress injuries from doing that in my right shoulder, from sitting there like this and mutzing around on the keyboard. Very common to do it with the left hand too and use a mouse like that. Don't do that. As much as it like kills you and pains you, sit up straight in your chair. You will pay a severe price for that long-term if you get stuck in front of a computer for years at a time. Um, what, what will happen is that you will, you will actually have muscles develop incorrectly in one side of your neck as opposed to the other. And I have a, uh, a long-term muscle tear right here on my neck. Literally, a computer hurt me, okay? I, I woke up one night and was startled over something, and I jerked away and tore one side of my neck, but not the other, um, because I'd spent so much time in front of a computer that my neck was kind of tilted like that. Be really careful about that injury. It's very specific to technology and keyboard enthusiasts, yes? I work at a pain clinic, so I do okay. a lot of <clears throat> Yeah, and programmers often have unequal back issues, right? Yeah, it's the inequality of those back issues that, that can cause so much of a problem because whichever side you are, you'll lean on the other side and use the other hand for a mouse. Don't do that. Here is a really good trick for that. Get a yoga ball and sit on that instead of a chair. You guys see me sitting like this? I actually, I sit like I'm sitting on a horse a lot of the time, actually. Um, almost astride a chair instead of sitting like up and back in it. It's because I'm keeping my entire center of gravity right over the top of my body like this, right? My head in a straight line from my spine. So try to do something similar. Don't do the thing where you lean over the keyboard. Um, talking about self-care and technology really is almost like a lot of injury prevention, to be frank. Um, every once in a while, stop, maybe every 15 minutes or 10 minutes or so. Don't look back at the keyboard. Look at something far away for like 10 minutes, okay? Or at least a minute or two. You need to do that because if your eyes focus in on the screen too long, you're going to get this weird kind of myopia. Check out um, yellow polarized glasses. You can look at like gunner's glasses and stuff like that. Gaming glasses are really good for that. They'll help with the blue light from the screen. Otherwise, you'll start to squint at the screen for a while. Your eyes will focus in, and you'll have a hard time seeing stuff that's not this far away from your face. I am already starting to have a couple of vision problems from spending all my time staring at computers. So be aware of that next thing. You can fix a lot of that by staring at something very far away. I was recently in eastern Washington, and I actually had a really hard time processing the distances that I was seeing across. Okay? Like, I, I, was, able, I was on top of a mountain and looking like 60 miles away. And I had a hard time actually even seeing that distance anymore, and that's, that's not a good thing, clearly, right? Mm -hmm. So try to focus on something as far away. So your, your neck and back issues, be careful about that. Careful about your eyes. <coughs> and the third and final medical problem is um, how you're handling your, um, your core strength, your abdominal core strength. It matters a great deal that you sit up straight, but it matters even more that your, um, that your body functions in this chair, yoga chair, or in, in however you seat yourself. Yoga balls are really good for that. If you sit on a yoga ball, it will keep your back straight almost automatically. Do not use a fourth or a third point of contact. So your, the yoga ball is on the ground, right? You maybe got two feet on the ground. Don't create a third point of contact anywhere, right? Don't use your elbows on anything. Don't lean back against something like this. Use only your feet on the ground and your guts, your core muscles, and that will keep you placed up like this. If you lean forward, you'll find yourself compensating a little bit on the chair or on the ball. That's fine. Do that. Um, but don't create a point of contact 
Do you see what I mean by point of contact, like an elbow on the desk or something like that? Because this will create that same unevenness that causes you problems. So those are some of the medical problems that come from staring at a computer for too long. You'll find people with problems in their lower and upper backs. It's very common to have the, uh, the vertebrae right between your shoulder blades here get out of whack, cause problems for you. Sitting up straight is the answer to that question, as is every once in a while. We, we tend to hunch, right? We're hunching over and staring at something like that. So clasp your hands behind your back. Well, you probably even like heard that. That pop pop was between my shoulder blades. If you can get that, you know, you get your spine straightened out, make sure that you're doing that. Stay even all the time. And it's problematic because we do an uneven thing a lot of the time at the machine, right? There's like a hand on the keyboard and a hand on the mouse. These are not equal activities in how we use them. So consider switching a mouse around or, I mean, I'm, t I'm, I'm telling you all this stuff because I totally don't do it. I mean, I slouch over my computer constantly and like drink pop and stuff. I'm terrible. So don't do anything that I do. Do only the stuff that I'm telling you to do right now and do not follow me as an example. I'm terrible at self-care. Okay. So those are some of the medical issues and how to fix some of those. Um, there are ongoing health and uh, mental wellness issues involving technology you should be aware of. One of the first ones is how, um, especially in Seattle, you know, seasonal affective disorder. Um, <coughs> Not getting enough vitamin D and staring too much at the wrong kind of light. This is blue light, not yellow light, coming from the machines. Um, getting the wrong kind of light and not getting enough, um, you know, circadian rhythm like daylight and night light, lack thereof at night can cause you problems long term in terms of mental health, depression, stress relief, stuff like that. There's a fix on your computer and on most of your phones. I think it's called Flex. And that's going to be, no, Flux, Flux, that's right. Um, it is a light monitor and changer based on the seasons, the time of day that it is, and when you're using your, your computer or your device. This will help to adjust the light based on where you are. A key component of not looking at blue light or realizing what it is, is that if you use your, how many of you guys use your, take your phone to bed? Tell me the truth. That's better. Yeah. So phone, whatever it is. Okay. First of all... <clears throat> I mean, I cuddle my phone like a, it's a goddamn cat, right? So, but don't take your phone to bed. Don't do, don't do the thing that I do. That's terrible. Um, don't take your phone into the bedroom with you. And if you do, do not use the bright light settings because it will interrupt your sleep cycle and your capacity to fall asleep. It's really bad for you and it will cause long-term problems with your REM sleep cycles. Um, any questions so far as we're talking about kind of the mental and long-term mental health effects as opposed to the physical ones? Questions? Thoughts? Just kind of weirded out there are so many long-term stress injuries involved in this all, all this stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, some of you are, some of you aren't. Um, something that I heard a really big top employment attorney in town say when referring to one of the big major employers in town is, it's stunning how many people come out of that company with disabilities several years later, long-term chronic disabilities. These are the kinds of disabilities we're talking about. Um, you, you can tear the muscles in your neck, cause yourself back problems, cause yourself so many problems with sleep and stuff like that, um, that technology can be killing you faster. Don't let that be the case for you. Um, technology workers have an extraordinarily high rate of stress injury, of mental health issues. This is how to prevent some of that. All right. Some of the other mental health issues to be aware of is long-term isolation causes problems. I'm an introvert. I'm, I don't really want to be around basically any of you right now. <laughs> uh, I like you. You're listening to me and quiet and far away. Um, <laughs> but if you don't have a couple of friends to get out of the house, do something with, try to get some, go play chess, you know, down at the mall. That's actually one of my favorite things to do is go play chess outside or at the mall. It's always a blast. You need to get away from the computer a little bit. Um, if you like people, go be around them. If you don't like people, go be around one or two of them and then go away again. Go to a bookstore. Um, but get out from in front of the computer. One thing that people often talk about in technology is that sometimes if they take their tech with them and go to a different physical location, they will successfully get away from whatever distractions are in their current location. So very, how many of you work from home? You do almost all of your work or school or whatever from home, right? Homework, anything like that. How many of you do it at school? Okay, how many of you do it at some third place? A Starbucks, a coffee shop? At work, okay, yeah. There you go. Um, so the thing to remember with that is wherever you do your primary work, if you're having problems concentrating or focusing, go to a different location. 
I will sometimes pick my laptop up and walk to a Starbucks and spend the hour there doing a <coughs> blog post or something like that. All right. What questions do you have about mental health and technology? I wouldn't be talking about this if this wasn't a debilitating issue causing depression and suicide among technology workers. Be aware of it in advance. Compensate. <clears throat> when you can't focus anymore, something in this puddle of issues that I've just brought up is affecting you or something else is, get out and go see somebody or just take a walk, smell some flowers. Yes? Is there a hierarchy in their computer program? Is there a what? A hierarchy in degrees for, like, say, in IT, like, for the people that have more and fewer issues with this kind of thing? Or just because you mentioned something about mental issues. Maybe. Yes. Is it connected to the fact that some people have more education? Is it That's actually a really good question. There, there are, in fact, a lot of studies that say that higher rates of depression are linked to higher intelligence. Um, and you'll and a lot of people would assert that the higher intelligence of people in technology as a as some kind of rate um, is is something that also contributes to depression. I'm more inclined to think that it has to do with the isolation and improper use of circadian rhythm. Um, I mean, sure, there's studies that will tell you that intelligence has a lot to do with depression and creativity and stuff like that. And there's a lot of pr studies linking that. But the overall cause that I've seen is that people just don't take care of themselves. The main key in both mental and physical health and technology is eat, sleep, and exercise. If you get your food right, if you get your exercise right, and if you get your um, sleep right, you're going to be okay. Do you know what I mean by sleep right? Or sleep hygiene? Ever heard of it? Okay. Whatever your amount of sleep is, at whenever you need to get it, get that same amount at that same time every single day. Don't sleep in other days. If you regulate yourself, your body will shut down. How many of you have had problems with insomnia? I certainly have, yeah. Um, some of the technology that we're using may contribute to that. Be aware of that. Yeah, some people just sleep like a baby no matter what. Um, I, I don't. A lot of people I know don't. Many of us let things like the uh, notifications on our phones wake us up. That is terrible. Turn your goddamn phone off when you go to sleep. Do not let the phone wake you up. There's nothing more important than your sleep. And if someone really needs to find you, someone knows where you are and will knock on your door. All right, nothing's going to explode that you can fix in the eight hours you need for sleeping. Ignore everything that I do and pay attention to what I just said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, and the last part of this are uh, strategies and ways to stay um, creative, creative and recharging your batteries. So getting away from the computer, taking care of these medical issues, and the last part of it, which is that recharge. You've heard me talk about side projects before. Now I'm talking about the dumb stuff that you do that lets you recharge. Saturday morning cartoons, pastries, petting the cat. I'm not talking about any life-changing stuff like I do, you know, security research and, 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 you know, academic research and fun projects and artistic stuff on the side that may or may not bring me money or acclaim or whatever or charity work and stuff like that. I'm talking about, like, sitting there with my cat in house shoes and being okay that I'm just sitting there with my cat in house shoes. I'm usually not. Usually I'm just kind of going all the time. Sometimes I gotta slow down. What do you do to recharge your batteries? Exercise. Exercise. That's sort of a thing that you have to, okay, so if that is what actually recharges your batteries, awesome. It doesn't necessarily recharge my batteries so much, but it's gonna work differently for everyone. Do you mind telling me what you exercise do? Um, well, I like to run. run. Okay, well, I'm, I'm done with you right now. I like to, like, you know, like, kind of, like, stretch a little bit and have, like, a latte. And that's, like, exercise. Okay, yeah. So my sister did uh, an Ironman a couple of years ago, and my mom was like, you should get up at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning and watch all of the texts for the status updates for your sister as she goes through the day doing Ironman. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. And then I'm like, I'm waking up, and it's, like, 10 o'clock. That's cool. I mean, I'll check and say, oh, that's cool. She's doing good. Great. I'm going to go get a latte, do a yoga class, and feel, like, I am not in the middle of like zero degree water in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and biking 112 miles and then maybe run a marathon after that. I was like, I'm going to, I mean, I don't feel morally superior right now, but I do feel like I'm in a really good place. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Completely different plane of existence. My sister was, she looked like rebar. It was crazy. She was like hard. It was awesome. And then my mom goes out and does it. Yeah. No, mm -mm. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> So what else do we do to recharge? Dumb stuff. Just sitting around 
sitting room. Sometimes not. I love that. Laying down and closing your eyes, but not actually sleeping. How many of you do that? I do that every once in a while. Yeah. Shut your brain off. I haven't heard meditation yet from anybody. Meditation, kind of putting stuff in process. There's a lot of different kinds of it. Buddhist meditation, doing rosaries, prayer beads, yoga, whatever. What's that? Mindful wellness, transcendental meditation, whatever that thing is, whatever that puts you in that kind of that altered, calm mental state. You know, there's people that find that shelving books at a library does that for them. Whatever that thing is that, that moves you into that, listening to classical music with your eyes closed or whatever in a safe space. Um, float tanks. Whatever that thing is, find that thing and don't not do it. Listen to what I said. Music. Not to what I do. <laughs> What's that? Music. Music is a very good one. Um, I am a, personally a gigantic fan for relaxation of some of the stuff like WC. You know, if I'm out and I've got to hang out, I'm listening to Haydn or whatever, but listen to something like WC or, you know, wait, what is uh, Dance. Dance Macabre? What's that? Smooth jazz. smooth jazz. There we no, I don't I'm not a smooth jazz person. But I know a lot of people that are. Ah, Dave Brubeck going around like he died like three years ago in the post going around Facebook again. Yeah, it's crazy. Any other thoughts on recharging your batteries? All right. All of those medical and social and personal and, and uh, mental issues with technology are things you need to watch out for long term. They're very important for your long term health. If you do not take care of yourself, get exercise, get your food right you're going to have some long-term problems and they're going to be harder in technology because there won't be people around you to notice yourself not taking good care of you. You're the only person that gets to evaluate whether you're doing a good job taking care of yourself, all right? Listen to the words that I said and not what I do. I'm a terrible example for all this. I, just, I know what the thing is I'm supposed to do and then I don't do it, so. <clears throat> she says, fighting a cold off from doing too much over the last two days. Any last questions or any thoughts on this? Okay, I'm about to lose my voice, so that's going to do it for the day. I would love you all to lay out.